Hello and welcome back to another episode of the iApple Guy. In this episode, we're doing something kind of different. Okay. So this is my 1980s Philips Color TV set. This is my 1980s Philips Color TV set. And I want to be able to use HDMI devices on this very TV. To actually accomplish this, I need to convert the digital HDMI signal into an analog RS signal. Let's get into it. Now, before I hook up any HDMI devices or show you how to convert all of this stuff, I'd like to clean this TV up a little more. I got this TV and old PC for free and basically saved them from the recycling center. It's been working fine for the past few years, but there's still dirt, grime, scratches and so on on the case. It also looks like it's filled with dust. Now this definitely isn't a restoration like a recap job or anything like that, but I just wanted to make the set a little more presentable and finally get rid of the dust. And here we go. I mean, it looks better than when we got it, so yeah. Now this TV has an antenna for picking up over the air signals back then. Um, it has UHF, VHF and the, I don't know, special S channels, which I guess were um, an extra channel in Europe. I'm not sure where those were used, but um, you have the top should be VHF, then the middle should be the S channel, and then the bottom one should be the ultra high frequency or UHF channels. Um, and then you also have this little stylus, you know, that you can tune into and into the right channel, of course. So let's say that here's number two. I'm gonna put my stylus right here at number two. You select channel two. You want to watch channel two in VHF, so you turn the switch all the way up to VHF and then to get a good signal you know you turn the dial and then when you get a good when you get a good signal that would be it you put your stupid little <laughs> stylus back in there let me just take that out and you would be done um, of course analog television stopped around 10 years ago here so there's no TV over the air anymore here so many of these TVs have basically become unusable, which is, you know, kind of sad because, you know, I still, I still like CRTs and I just, I love the aesthetic of this little Philips TV set. Okay, so the second thing that this TV has is a coaxial port. So this is the port that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna convert HDMI into an, you know, analog RS signal over a coaxial cable. Now, if you want to do this with your own like a vintage CRT TV set or TV that only has a coaxial port or actually just no ports and only an antenna, um, if you want to do this too, then most of the, the TVs from this era and earlier um, have two little screws here that you can also hook up an antenna to, but then with screws instead of a port. Um, and then you can actually get one of those little UHF or VHF uh, matching transformers and all you need to do is then plug in your coaxial cable and screw the little pigtail connectors onto the two screws over here. Now my set came with this pre-installed antenna and what you would have done is taken this very grimy um, coaxial cable and plugged it into the back right here and then you would have picked up signals via the antenna or you could have used an external antenna that also used a coaxial cable. Okay, so we will be needing this. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, convert HDMI to AV. You have the HDMI input right here and the RCA or composite video output right here. Um, it runs on five volts USB power, so you can actually power this thing off like a phone charger or your um, USB port on your laptop, if that's what you're using. Um, and it also has this little NTSC PAL switch, and we are gonna be setting it to PAL because I have a European TV. Um, it's one of those little cheapo HDMI to AV converters, but to my surprise, it has been working very well. So I'm pretty pleased with this thing. Now, it's kind of a shame that so many of these TVs have been thrown out because they're unusable nowadays, because we're already at the last step. This is the last step. This is a simple RF modulator. Um, you plug your composite video into here and then your RF signal comes out here via a coaxial cable. Um, this box, I mean, this one also has an RF import, but we'll only be using the 2TV or RF out uh, port here. Um, it does need power, but that's no problem. I have the power supply and cable, and all I need to do then is switch it on, select the channel. Um, we also have the mode, you know, US or European here, obviously European. Um, and let's say I set it to VHF channel four, then all I need to do is match the channel on the TV and then I'm ready to go. So these RF modulators were really common back in the day to use on systems that didn't have an RF outport. Now I'm gonna use my Mac with a display port and not an HDMI port, so I'm gonna use this extra adapter, but uh, as you can see, it's just HDMI. So I can plug in my HDMI cable here, and then I'm gonna use red for video and white for audio. Now I'm not, I'm not gonna use stereo because this TV uses mono output anyway, so that doesn't matter. Then we have the RF modulator, I'm gonna take my red cable for video, plug it into video in, then, con gonna, then I'm gonna take my audio and put it in audio left, because this is audio left as well. Okay, and now I can actually grab my coaxial cable. Now my coaxial cable, as you might see, has two different ends. This is the F-type connector and this is an IEC type coaxial cable connector. Now you also have different types of coaxial ports, uh, but mine uses a IEC type coaxial port. Mine just happens to use one of these IEC type connectors. So I just bought a cable that um, uses the F type connector at one end and the IEC type connector at the other end. If you only have cables with like an F-type connector end, you can actually use uh, like a little adapter. I also have one of these that will convert an F-type connector into an IEC style jack or connector. Screw the cable onto the RF out port of the RF modulator. Like just let me plug them in, not screw them on. That's fine and take the other end and plug it in. Et voila. Okay, so here's a quick tour. Mini display board to HDMI. Then we get HDMI all the way to this HDMI to AV converter um, that is powered by a phone charger and here we have the composite video coming out of the HDMI to AV adapter going into the RF modulator that is turned on and set to VHF channel 4. Then we have the coaxial cable RF signal going all the way from the RF modulator into the back of the 
television. Now this should work. So let's test it out. Hey, well, that works. Nice. Mustn't lose that. Oh, there we go. That's my Mac. I'm gonna turn the light off and let's play something. How about the channel trailer? Okay, so I have to go into my settings because my sound is not outputting. There we go, there we go. Now I can watch my video and the audio should come through the TV. Hello, I'm Arno or the I Apple guy. On this show we take a look at Haha. <laughs> Oh, that's, you're going to see this in uh, that clip is a clip from this video. <laughs> Not going to lie. Pretty damn cool. Well, be sure to leave a like because I might get copyright issues because of this, but I just I just had to watch it. Yes, you know where this is going. <laughs> Imagine seeing this like on TV back in 1984. Like this is one epic ad, like wow. On January 24th. Apple computer will introduce Macintosh and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. Ooh. Okay, so there's one thing I still need to try out. I have an antenna, I have an RF modulator, and this antenna has a coaxial cable. Now I can actually connect this antenna to this RF modulator and I can actually send a, a video signal through these antennas into the air. And then what I can do is actually grab another TV that uses an antenna and pick it up. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Now, this is one of those little portable TVs from the 1980s. Um, I can actually, yeah, see. October 1987 and uh, I can actually connect an antenna like here I can actually connect up an antenna external antenna but I don't have the right adapter for an antenna connection like this uh, so what I'll do is use whatever is left of the antenna um, it's a little cable but it'll work um, and pick up the signals over the air that this antenna over here will be sending out because I will have this plugged into this RF modulator and then you know the RF modulator will go all the way to my computer. Okay so to convert this F type connector to a female type IEC connector I actually used this cable that goes from F type connector to you know again IEC type connector but this time female so I can plug in this antenna. Uh, now it's connected and I can actually send video signals or just signals through the air with these antennas. Okay, so I just extended my antennas and uh, let's see if we can pick anything up. Okay, so VHF, channel 4, yes. Well, oh, without the V-hold. This thing should have V-hold on the back, so let's change that. V-hold. Well, that's... 
Hmm. Okay, okay, I'm actually picking something up. It's not very good, but... And that is now set to channel 21 UHF. Set my TV to UHF as well. And now... That's more like it. That rooks. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. There we go. And guess what? Wireless. <laughs> yeah, it's a little cranky, but it works. Okay, so I just hooked it up to my school computer or Lenovo ThinkPad, and uh, yeah, it works. <laughs> well, this calls for a game of Doom on a black and white CRT TV that is also way too small, but we'll look past that. <laughs> and well, here's Steam. <laughs> This is one of those cases of simply why not, I guess. Oh yeah, this is something I wanted to try out. Well, don't mind me just browsing the web using a television from the 1980s. Preferably you use a double density blocking cover. If you don't have one of those, you can just simply put tape over uh, one of the holes on a standard. So my initial plan was to like have all of this stuff in the back of the TV and have like an HDMI port at the back. And that would have been really cool or put like a Chromecast in it. But I didn't do it because I might need, you know, some of this stuff for a project. My HDMI to an AV converter, my uh, RF modulator. I just didn't do it. Um, I also need to make a bracket or adhesive. Uh, but you know also need additional power even but I didn't do it but there is a very nice and interesting video actually on YouTube um, from a guy that actually has done this and put a Chromecast inside of his TV and just two words it's awesome um, I'm not promoting the guy I also don't know him but I, I really like his video and he actually shows you how he did it and how he put everything inside of his TV um, and then he just uses a Chromecast to stream to his old, you know, vintage CRT television. Well, that about wraps it up. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. Now, I really mean that. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, and to consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel because it helps the algorithm. Okay, so this is kind of a quick channel update. I will be posting some stuff in the month of March for Marchintage. Marchintage is an event like December and Subtandy, but this month we really want to bring focus on Classic Mac. So I'll definitely be participating in that. And what I want to say is that I actually have a couple of videos planned for the month of March, you know, that have to do with Marchintage or, you know, just Classic Macs. Um, so stick around for those. Um, more great content is coming. Now, if you want more content like this, don't forget to check out all of my social media. Links are in the description. And you can also join our Discord server if you'd like to talk to me and some of my friends about this kind of stuff. And then I'll see you in the future.